We've seen almost 13,000 silver contracts stand for delivery. That's this year. As far as what's going on in the metals market, look, you know, I haven't read why the price of silver got clobbered today. And whatever it is, it doesn't make sense. Because if we look at what happened last week when it got clobbered, 25,890,000 ounces or 5,178 uh, COMEX contracts were dumped in 15 minutes. So no one in their right mind who is trying to maximize a return on any asset being sold would dump that kind of quantity at the open. It's done for effect. It's a drive-by shooting. It's done to demoralize. But in reality, you take a step back and say, what kind of idiot would ever do that? And the answer is no one who, who was trying to maximize a return. It is someone who is trying to do this for effect. And that's why when you see all of these things happen, when you see the largest accumulation of gold by the central banks ever over the last 18 months, when you see countries continuing to move away from the West, including our allies, and using gold and silver as a way to de-dollarize, then the price means nothing. And I know it's, it's hard to hear that. It's almost hard to say it, but it's true because it is being the price action is being betrayed by the massive drawdowns that we continue to see on COMEX and on the LBMA. And I think it's it's worth noting. It really is worth noting that if we talk about just the amount of, of, of deliveries that we've seen this year, we've seen almost 13,000 silver contracts stand for delivery. That's this year, that's 65 million ounces that have stood for delivery. Uh, that's over 2,000 tons. And when you talk about gold, over 240 tons have been delivered out of COMEX since January 1st. And, and last week when I was laying around doing a little reading on the mend, I read that 55 tons were delivered last week in the seven trading days up to when I was reading this on Tuesday or Wednesday. So you can see that deliveries is a rising tendency. We are seeing more and more and more deliveries quietly, though. Massive deliveries off the LBMA. The price and the price action is meaningless when you see big deliveries across the globe and a continuing drive to de-dollarize de into this August meeting, which now our allies are requesting access to, where supposedly they're going to issue a new currency pegged to commodities. This is this is the volatility before the storm. And, you know, normally they say the calm before the storm. But if you look at a big move generally in history, a big move in a market, it's usually uh, precipitated by a great volatility leading up to it. And this volatility, which makes no sense in the greater scheme of things, this price action it makes no sense in the greater scheme of things. Um, to me, it it is, it's, it makes sense to what the, the the playbook that they've used for a very long time. And when you see the type of um, uh, maneuvers that they're making by dumping 25 million ounces at the opening, I think it, it reeks of desperation. And to me, we're getting close to that moment. So one last thing I'd like to say in the three years that I've been doing this with you, I don't know that there's been a better environment right now because of Really, there's there's has been a little bit of apathy in the market right now, and it's in, it's slow in, in the entire precious metals space. It's slow, and I think price, premium, availability, it's as good as it's been since 2020. And so, people who are looking to do what the biggest money in the world is doing, I don't know that there's been a better time to do it in the last three years. Any thoughts looking forward to next month's uh, Rural Symposium, uh, again in Boca Raton, Florida, uh, as far as, I, I guess you could say I told you so, <laughs> it'd be a short speech, but anyway, things that are on your mind that you're going to bring forward. Well, yeah, I mean, I have two speeches and one of them will be a recap of what well, I've been saying this same narrative at his show for the last, this will be my third year in a row, and I have been right. And there are very few times in, in life in this industry where you can say, I've been right. I mean, that's the truth. People always say when they're right, they never talk about when they're wrong. And I would say to you that, you know, I don't go around saying that because <clears throat> being right, I've, we have been right. We've never got the timing right ever. It's just too hard. But I have been right on the timing, too, on this. And I'm going to I'm going to talk about that. But more importantly, 
you know, and I'm a little bit hesitant to even go down this road, but the, the, t the name of my second presentation is something to the extent of could this all have been planned? And when you look at the people advising our president, from Lael Brainerd to Jared Bernstein and the other advisors, almost all of them, their whole mantra, their whole uh, school of thought it re regards uh, is, is regarding um, woke ideology, uh, wealth redistribution, um, um, things that favor a an agenda of of a social agenda rather than focusing on the shareholder price. Uh, it's really quite shocking, as a matter of fact. And when you realize that his two main advisors, Jared Bernstein, advocates losing the world reserve status and Lael Brainerd advocates uh, a central bank digital currency and no banks other than one central bank, you can take a look and see what's happening around us and say, my gosh, it couldn't have played out any better. And and there are other, you know, other things that I'll I'll dig into that have just blown me away the more I read into it. But I can tell you that, yeah, this is a lot bigger problem than people I think really understand because it, it to me, it just seems as though that they are looking for a villain. They are looking for a, a bad guy to point to, to say, this is why everything fell apart. There is no way to fix the problem that we are in. Either you inflate or you default. We will not produce our way out of almost 200 trillion in debt. And so, Look, we raised, we we rose, uh, brought the rates up to five percent and almost blew up the entire banking system. They've paused. They're probably going to pivot and go the other direction. They will signal to the world that they have chosen inflation over austerity, the way that all politicians have, and that's when things really start to get interesting. In particular, when you're talking about in August, the majority of the world's population coming to the table with a new currency pegged to commodities and. You know, in reading Jim Rickard's article, it's also very, very interesting when he talks about the prospects of them creating a very robust bond market. And he talks about the difference between reserve currencies uh, and a transactional currency <clears throat> that is used globally. Basically, a reserve currency has to have a robust bond market. And that's what the U.S. has, right? But look at the amount of of, of foreign selling of, of U.S. treasuries. It's off the charts. It's the U.S. public that's been buying all of the bonds, leaving the banks and moving to uh, a yield that the Fed is offering, but the rest of the world is dumping bonds. And if the, as Jim talks about, if they really want this to succeed, that they will issue bonds, BRICS bonds, and they will implore their citizens, just like we did during uh, World War II, I think, to buy government bonds and really turn the BRICS uh, idea into a big, big, big game-changing reality. And I look, I wouldn't discount one thing that Mr. Rickard says. He's as smart as they come. Um, but it's very concerning. And you take a step back and look at who's advising the, the government. You can put all this together. I mean, global de-dollarization, advising the president to uh, and the administration to abandon the world reserve standard, to go to a central bank digital currency. I mean, everything that we are seeing, it just, you couldn't make it up. Uh, and as Bill Holter said, what, it's just too stupid to not be true? Is that what he said? Something along those lines? Anyways, it could be a mistake. There you go. Well, it is too stupid to be a mistake. The more that I keep reading this stuff, the more blown away that I am. And I, I think this is all reason why we own gold and silver. It's not to get wealthy. It's because we are on the foot, on, on, on at the precipice of some very, very big changes globally.